absolutely butchered this one. We had a bad day. Oh, it's cutting now. So, so it's cutting, way. okay. Meet our family. <laughs> no, you get that. No, you get it. We've been living in a caravan while we build our own home here along the south coast of Western Australia. We're basically aspiring to live a more simplistic lifestyle so that we have more time for each other and all of the fun things that we enjoy doing in life. If you'd like to journey along with us, please subscribe, kick back and enjoy this episode of Somewhere Out There. Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. This video is part two of our concrete bench tops. If you haven't seen part one, I'll link it in the description below so you can check it out. Um, part two, finishing the bench tops was a lot more difficult than part one, but still achievable and really happy with the finished product. Um, I will show you some footage of that now. They came out really smooth and not too glossy, which is what I wanted, but still a nice, smooth, easy, cleanable surface. And um, they have a nice little beveled edge on the side with a tiny bit of aggregate showing. And then on the top, we have a little bit of um, like salt and pepper finish in some spots and other spots. It's just um, looks like all the fines um, of the concrete and you can barely even see any sand at all. Um, yeah. I love them. I would 100% do it again. I think Dane would do it again as well. The process was a little bit frustrating. Um, I think just lack of experience. But now that we've done it, I think if we were to do it again, we would do things slightly different. Yeah, basically it was quite a frustrating process. So we don't have a whole bunch of footage of every single little step. This isn't a video saying do exactly what we did because we kind of, it didn't work for us the whole time. But um, basically I'm gonna show you what we did and maybe try and explain how we would do it different or what we kind of tweaked to make the process better as we went along. We were really fortunate to get um, advice from professionals and um, we pretty much followed that advice to the T. Um, I think where we went wrong wasn't the process itself it was the fact that we didn't have very much experience i'll tell you what our problem was first and then i'll let the footage roll on and kind of explain the process so where we ran into trouble and this was the only thing that we ran into trouble with was when we were finishing our bench tops using the products um, we were getting like a balling up effect of product and probably fines on the surface of the concrete so it was balling up into like a gum and it was sticking to the surface of the concrete and the worst part about it was um, the actual color from the resin pads that we were using which were like a yellowy tingy goldy color was transferring into that gum so we had like a um, yellow goldy hue smudges um, stripes in our slab which isn't ideal when you have white concrete the problem was I think we had a grouting agent on there um, and the grouting agent I'll put some footage of us using it is a solution you mix in with water and you spritz it on the concrete and it mixes with all the fines in the concrete as you grind it with the resin pads or as you finish it with the resin pads and it makes like a, a grout basically and it fills in any crevices, cracks, chips, um, bubbles, anything in your concrete to make the surface really, really smooth and to just fill in any texture um, and it worked really, really beautifully. So that was on first. Then you are supposed to put lithium um, in between layers of grinding as well. I think only a couple of times we did it 
and that's supposed to act as a hardener on your concrete because you're using it as a bench top you obviously want it to be hardy you don't want it to chip easily or crack or anything like that so we were also using lithium so those two products in combination with the fact that we were using an orbital sander instead of a grinder you're supposed to use a grinder we didn't have one um, and they are quite expensive so we thought we'll try give the sander a go probably wasn't the best decision I would recommend using a grinder from the get-go in hindsight when we swapped over to finally using a grinder we had the same problem so this, in my opinion the sander did a pretty good job it was just very hard on the sander and we ended up breaking one so I think I would still recommend using the actual grinder and that is what you are supposed to use for these specific resin pads anyway so the grouting agent the lithium and then what i we now think was the heat coming from the sander and the grinder all those factors mixed in together was creating this balling up effect because the resin pad was warm it was like gumming up all of the product on the bench top that wasn't ideal it was extremely frustrating you had to stop probably every five minutes to actually clean the gum off the resin pad so that it was still cutting and finishing the bench top smoothly otherwise it would just get gummed up and it would be doing nothing except creating gumballs on the bench it was just a really frustrating and um time consuming process for some reason the kitchen was way worse than the laundry and the bathroom the laundry and the bathroom were quite easy to finish they still did get some yellow tinge on them but nowhere near as bad as the kitchen um it's really hard i think if we you know ever do it again i, I think we'd still use the same products um i think maybe we would just use a grinder from the start and uh stop before it gets hot and just let it you know cool down and then come back and do it again um like i said really happy with how they turned out um all the yellows out of them now and they look amazing they feel amazing they've been resealed again and they look the best now than what they ever have the guys did say like the professionals did say white concrete is also like just a dog to work with compared to regular concrete because of the oxide and things in it apparently it's harder to work with could all could have also been an issue um but again we don't know we've never done it any other time so i feel like this video isn't very helpful but um just being open and honest with the process um i would still recommend doing it I think, you know, they turned out really good. They're really cost effective and frustration aside, they look amazing. I've always wanted them. I wanted them in our old house, but it was just too hard going through a builder. And yeah, I'm really stoked with how they turned out and um, the, you know, how, how they're going to be functionally, I guess we will see over time and I will make sure I do film that over time, do updates. But yeah, they just, they look really great and I couldn't be happier with them. And yeah, I, I guess hopefully this video is a bit, you know, gives you a bit of information and insight into the finishing process, but definitely don't take it as um, instructions is what I'm, what I'm trying to say. We went to the guys at Concrete Hire in Perth, Western Australia, and they were amazing. Couldn't speak more highly of them. That's where we got all of our products from and they really helped Dane out with um, information. They were extremely helpful with um, telling us how to finish our floors because we do want to finish them a bit better right before we move in. Um, yeah, so highly recommend them if you're in Western Australia um, to get your products from and everything else like that. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna just let more footage roll on now and yeah, I hope you enjoy watching.
so we're on about, I think it's about day five of this slab um, being poured. We stopped wetting it uh, yesterday. I think it had um, like water. Yeah, it had water on it 24 hours ago, but we haven't wet it since. Um, there's still a few damp patches, um, but we just didn't want to wet it too much, basically. It seems to be fine. We haven't got any cracks yet. Um, obviously, it's still quite wet. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it goes over the next um, couple of weeks. We obviously need to finish it probably this weekend. Um, Dane's got a box of stuff here that I'm sure he'll explain how he's finishing it. So this one, this one must be a week that we've since we've actually poured it, um, and it looks great. And then this one would be the same as the kitchen, about day five, and also no no cracks yet. So hopefully we've we've avoided the crack cracking situation day six of this slab and we did find some cracks which is to be expected a little bit disappointing but to be expected so there's one here uh, okay where is it oh right there so there's a crack there just a hairline crack and another one back here there leading into the stove top and that's kind of where I think Dane said it previously we're expecting them to crack is another one here another one there and another one here off the corner of this that's obviously cracked but that's where the foam is and potentially another one here just because that's their weakest point so we'll see what happens with those the other ones don't have any cracks yet I am going to um, pull out the foam, which is scary. James assured me that it's very easy and I can't wreck anything, but we will see. <laughs> he is in town helping out some friends this morning, so he'll be back around lunchtime. So I'm going to pull all the foam out and I'm going to put plastic over all the cabinets again, ready for him to finish off the bench tops today. So I don't have many tools because Dane has them all. So I'm going to just use what I can find, which is this little Stanley knife. And um, I'm just going to start taking out the phone. <sighs> okay. I don't even know where to start doing this. Let's just go in.
Okay, so we are attempting to grind the edge using a contraption thing that goes on an angle grinder. I'll show you in a minute. Um, so we've just done this little edge here, um, but we want a bit more. So Dane's just getting an idea on how he can do that. I just realized that we've, that's all marked, but I think that's all getting ground back anyway, so it doesn't matter. Anyway. I'm going to film the process. Looks really, really great. Hard work, but looks good. A few small holes. A few holes to fill. Uh, so you're just going to fill them with grout? Yeah. Cool. I think they'll just blend in with all the other aggregate. Looks great. Are you happy with it? Apart from that. Apart from the crack. I've expected it though. I know. No, it still looks amazing. It's rustic. And it's a home job. Apart from that. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. It'll be fun. I think it looks amazing. I'm just gonna be excited to have a bench again. Mm. Bench space. What? been so long. So do you want to tell us what we've got here? Resin pads. Okay. And varying grits. Did you say resin pads? Yeah. Sure. Max 4,000 RPM. So we've got 1,500, that's your finest. 800, 50, they're the coarsest. Wow. 350s, should be 300s. 200, yeah. 200, 400, and a 200 and a 400. Okay. Great. So these are meant to be going on a variable speed angle grinder. Okay. Or sander polisher. Yeah. But today they're going on an orbital. Why? Because they don't have a variable speed angle grinder. Sure. And they can be used on an orbital. Not designed for it, but we're gonna see how it goes. They fit. Okay, well that's good. Good news. We'll give it a crack, see what happens.
Another day of bench tops. Last night, Dane um, like ground this one back. Um, and it looks amazing. We've got some really nice texture happening in the slab with the sand and a little bit of exposed egg on the edge, which looks beautiful. I think he's done or he's doing this one. Is this one done now? With the roughest stuff? Not quite. Okay. So a little bit more on this one. I think he'll pretty much be grinding all day because he's only done it with the most coarse pads and then obviously he will go over them again with the finer ones to get them really nice this one hasn't been done at all we've just done the edge okay so the the sander isn't the problem because you're obviously using the sander again oh the sander is good for, it's less harsh than the grinder Oh, okay. So it's good for it um, get right into the... Okay. The grinder's actually cutting a bit of a line. Sure. Along the edge, but this just goes, I can just get it ah, slightly I closer see. to the wall. So okay. rather than having a sharp edge there, okay. it sort of feathers it So out. if someone was going to do this, grinder first, 100%. Hey, definitely. definitely don't use this like what we do. This is, and the grinder's too hard to put on an angle like that. Okay. Cuts too much away. Go yeah. Watch. Go ahead, you go. So, so this is really good for like just um, finishing it off. So the sand is not the worst thing in the world. It's just that we probably should have started with the grinder. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And do you think, would you recommend using lithium or would you not use lithium? Oh, it's what the professionals use. So yeah. to densify the concrete. Yeah. So you would use lithium yeah, again? I don't know how you avoid it. What's the matter, babe? You don't know how you avoid the gumming up, you mean? But this looks great. There's no gumming up on this at all. Oh, it's cutting now. Yeah, so, so it's cutting, bit. okay. So whereas before all that was getting filled Gummed up. Gummed up, yeah. And that's now what I was- get out a good little tip to clean these. Okay. When they start getting full. Okay. Put a 40 grit sandpaper ah, on this. Ah, and sand it. Yeah. Rather than using like a Stanley knife like what I was doing. Which wouldn't remove it all anyway. Okay. It trashes it, feel that. Oh wow, them. okay, yeah, yeah, so all right. It crashes on me, burns through a heap of them, but okay. it, it means that I don't think I could have, it was getting cut through. Where it was so them. kind of what I was explaining outside when I was showing the actual gummed up um, pads. What's the matter, babe? We're all a bit sick at the moment. Testing negative for COVID, but we're all a bit snotty and gross, so we're all a bit miserable. <laughs> As far as putting the actual um, sealer on, you can't really, you can tell as soon as you put it on that it's there, but when it dries, you can't actually really tell that it's even on there. Um, it pretty much just looks exactly how it looks now. So you see how it kind of changes color like that. Um, once that dries, you don't even, it looks like what it did before it was wet. It evaporates pretty quick. That's the process. So I've just used that amount for that section and then I'll put more on and move on to the next section. There's still a bit on here. You can see it coming off, but I like to kind of put a fair bit on so that I can really rub it in and let it dry. that was the process of us finishing our concrete bench tops it was tedious but a good experience all in all and definitely have learnt a lot in the process um, yeah 
thanks everyone for the kind comments. We've had a lot in like the last few weeks. We've had a lot of love on, yeah, just our house and us, what we're doing. And you know, it, um, we really appreciate it because sometimes it's hard. So yeah, it's really nice to hear the positive feedback and I'm glad you're enjoying the videos um, as sporadic as they are. Um, we are painting at the moment, so I probably have paint in my hair. We could almost count down the days that we are away from moving into our house, which is, or at least putting in for notice of completion, which is really wild and exciting. And yeah, we can't wait. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you like it. If you did like it, give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And yeah, leave us a comment of what you want to see. We're getting, we're coming towards the end. I mean, not really, there is a lot to do. Have a look at all of this. Sand, big piles. I'm gonna film all of our, all of our um, landscaping and everything as well as the finishing off of the house. So you won't be uh, getting rid of us just yet. But anyway, thanks for watching and um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video.